also want to emphasize. So another thing I also want to emphasize on is about choosing your co-founders. When you are choosing your co-founder or co-founders, first thing you need to do is that, or you need to know is that you need to choose friends, people within, people who happens to be your friends, people who you already have at least basic relationship with. Most times it could be six months, it could be, 10 years, it could be two years, but well, you need to understand, you need to know them. You need to know who your co-founders are. You don't just bump into someone and then it happens. That, that can be possible, right? Now, I'm not saying that you can't do that. You can't have a co-founder you just bump into and then you start working with them. It could work, right? But most co-founders are, are, are basically your friends, right? And I'll share my reasons why you need to uh, get your f initial team who happens to be your co-founders to be people you previously know at least six months or, or one year or 10 years or, or so. So let me give an instance. Uh, a couple of us know about Rat5 Tech Hub, which happens to be a company uh, I run with, uh, with Nana, right? Now, Nana and I, we have been friends. We have been we have known each other since 2010 and we were cosmetics and not just that we were serving our department and he was the president i was the secretary so we we have been working so closely so you know most times people wonder why have we been together for a long time right what's the secret the simple secret is just because to a large extent we have work together in the past, not really building a business, but there is this relationship, okay? So what I will use to explain this is by saying, it's just like you not dating a, a, a girl and you just move into marriage with, with her. So you see that it is not a guarantee that the marriage will fail, but you know what it implies. It implies that there could be failure along the, along the, along the line because you don't really know this person right? So uh, make sure that these people are people you, you know. They could be your friends, right? And uh, the next thing I also want to jump into is to talk about from the aspect of the idea, right? The idea, choosing the idea. Now, you might not need to, as a, as a founder or as a CEO or as a founder, okay, let me say as a founder, for you to really say, oh, you need to come up with the idea and then you now share it with your co-founders. That's cool, that can work that way. But the best, the, the best approach could be uh, you being with your friends who happen to be your co-founders and you people are brainstorming and you people are discussing and uh, an idea comes up and say, oh, this a problem actually comes up. You people reflect on a problem and say, oh, we can actually tackle this problem and then solve this problem. Now, at that point, each of you are actually brainstorming and thinking of how to solve that problem. Let me tell you why this approach works better. I'm not saying you cannot have an idea and then bring people together and then build it, right? That, I'm not saying that is wrong. Just like I said, I'm not saying it is wrong for you to go to an event and see someone and then bring the person in as your co-founder and then start working with the person. I'm not saying that it wouldn't work. I'm just saying these are some of the things that can help you succeed, right? So that your failure rates will actually reduce, okay? By the way, they, by the way, they said there is uh, uh, love at first sight, right? So you can see someone and then the person can become your co-founder and it could work for you guys. Now, talking about the idea, when you guys are brainstorming and you people are talking about the idea, you see at this point, nobody can easily claim ownership of the startup, of the idea, right? So you see that everybody will want to contribute to it, to the success of it. But when you bring it up, especially when the leadership is not really solid and there is no clear roadmap and vision within the team, you see that certain persons will not commit strongly because they believe that they, will, they did not contribute to that idea. They did not contribute to that startup, 
right? They do not contribute to the problem, right? So, but that doesn't mean that you could come up with an idea on your own. Then you, you get your friends, people who are likely to build with you and then jump into solving the problem with them, right? So we are talking about, we are talking about startup being equal to growth. And one tool for any startup to actually grow very fast is leveraging technology, right? That's technology. So when we talk about tech startups, we also need to consider you need to have a technical co-founder so that you can be able to build your tech company. If we are talking about tech company, a company that must leverage technology to grow. Well, I, just like we said, a startup is a company designed for growth. We, did, we are not saying that it must be leveraging technology. So for us, it is growing very fast, right? Now, technology cannot amplify that speed. Now, you need to have a co-founder who has a technical background if you're building a tech startup. I'll give an instance, just like I know a couple of us know about uh, Choya. So I, 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 I started a startup called Choya. Okay, and a few of us know, uh, have been following our story and our journey, right? So simply, let me not get, get, get into the story. So I, I will not bore you with that. Maybe subsequently I, I'll, I'll be able to share that. Now, I have a co-founder who happens to have a technical background. And sincerely speaking, he's a hero, right? He's a hero. For me, he's a hero. He's, because without him, because what we are building is built upon technology. So without him, we cannot achieve what we are doing. And funny enough, we cannot assess, assess capital funding to be able to build certain things or be able to move very fast. So what happens, because of his expertise, we can be able to launch, we can be able to build our product. So you see why a technical founder is very key if you're building a tech, if you're building a tech startup, okay? Then uh, let me talk about the job of the founder or the CEO. You know, there is this common thing that the CEO sits in the office and press laptop and send emails and make calls and uh, try to do it from the comfort of his home, like try to relax, to do everything he does, right? So, but the truth is that the CEO's job is to, is to do the hard work, right? Is to do the hard work. The CEO's job is to do the, if you, if you, if you want to start a company, you cannot go and hire salespeople and say, let salespeople go and stand on the road, especially we are talking about early stage startups. So this happens to be some of the mistakes we, we make as, as early stage founders. So you must do the hard job, right? And if you happen to be a CEO who is not technical, who doesn't have the technical background, there is nothing wrong with you trying to do the the, the run around to make sure that every other person is happy. Because at that point, your job is to make sure that every other person is, every other person is happy and they are building the right thing, right? And once you launch, your job is to get out there if it requires you to get out there. Your job is to make sure that you go out there on the road, on the street to get people to, 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 to use your product. Your job is to talk about your product. It is not about you sitting at home, sitting in the office, and then ask people to do that. So your number one job is to do that yourself, right? I remember, my, I remember the experience while, while we are building Choya. We have been, we have been uh, iterating from, from one idea to the other to where we are today. So I remember when we were trying to provide access to fresh food to individuals. I go to the market, I buy this food, I buy, I buy, I buy uh, the whole stuff and I take it to the customers and I want to do it physically by myself, right? So there is this impression that your first customers actually have when they see you doing it at that initial time. I will recommend every one of us to go and read what uh, Paul wrote uh, 
call from uh, Y Combinator Road about doing what doesn't scale. So at that initial stage, so this brings me to execution, which Mr. Kola talked about. So what is the, what is the execution goal for, for an early stage startup? So at this stage, you might not really need to grow very fast, very fast once you are starting. At that point, what you want to do is you want to get a product market fit. So talking about product market fit is for you to build what people love. That is your first goal. Your first goal is not for you to get into America, get into Asia, get into Ghana, get into different places. Your number one goal is to build what people love. And there is no way for you to know that people love what you have or what you're building until you launch and then give it out to them. And there is nothing called innovation until people are using it and people love it and a large number of people are using it. That is when you call it innovative. That's when you call it innovative. So, you know, we use the word innovation, innovative idea, innovative idea, innovative solution. And a solution can never, or a product is not innovative until it's been tested in the market and used by people. So at this point, at the early stage, what you need to do is to consider how do we hit our product market fit. Product market fit is building what people love. Your first product is not going to be called look. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Can, yes okay. Sir. Okay. So cool. So your first product might not look so wonderful, but you need to launch and then begin to get feedback from your customers. And then you can now be able to understand exactly what these customers want and then move into scaling as fast as possible. So one of the mistakes we make as founders is to begin to scale very fast. At that point, you are scaling very fast. You are scaling with a product that is not really cool for large number of persons. So but if you have about 1,000 persons, 5,000 persons, 10,000 persons, 100 persons, 50 persons who are using your product and they are enjoying it, and they are able to give you certain feedbacks and you can build what people love. You can now go out there and put all the money, hire more persons to join your team, and then you can now be able to scale at, as fast as possible. But this doesn't, this doesn't mean that you will not do execute very fast. So while you are trying to hit your product market fit, you need to be very fast in your execution. So while you are testing, iterating, building, you need to be very fast so that within a few weeks, within a few months, you have been able to identify, you have been able to figure out what customers truly want. And then you can now build a better product and then launch it to a larger, a larger market, right? So these are some of the things we can also consider so that we don't also spend time. I, I, most of these things I'm sharing, I'm sharing it out of experience. I remember when we launched, we launched and we were trying to launch and get a, a large number of persons. We started doing b boards, we started doing a couple of things. It doesn't make sense. So if you have 1,000 persons who are using your product, try to see how you can be able to build what they love and then you can easily begin to launch to a larger market, okay? Then I move into uh, fundraising. So all these things I'm talking about, Mr. Kola has already dealt with them, okay? But what I'm trying to share is for us to understand what really works and how most of this thing works from the context of knowledge because my people perish because of lack of knowledge. So we lack knowledge. Likewise me, I have failed countless of times. Why? Because I don't have understanding. Right, so we, we, we fell because of lack of understanding of certain basic things. Now, when it comes to funding, fundraising, Mr. Kola has dealt on that. You see, the approach is for you to build something and then you work hard to make sure that people are using it. It must not be millions of people. It could be few persons who are using it and they love it. And you need to consider that they are using it frequently that is they are active not the one they use it today and they use it next 20 years 
So once you are building what people love, you see that it is now easier for you to now begin to talk about raising fund. You don't just have an idea and you start talking about raising fund, right? And Mr. Kola already explained that you can easily raise fund from your friends and families. And at this point, these are the people you can easily raise fund from. I'm not saying that you cannot raise fund when you just have an idea and uh, an angel will just give you money. But what I'm saying is that it is quite difficult for you to do that at that stage, unless you have the network you schooled in in Harvard and a couple of other factors. I remember when I was spending my time, wasting my time going to talk to, to, to investors, going to have meetings, countless of meetings with investors. They're, they're wasting my time. I'm also wasting their time. So you see that if actually you focus on building your business and you're building what people love, automatically investors will come to you. That's how it works. You don't force yourself on investors. You just, it's just like you don't force yourself on a lady. Once you are pressurizing, the lady will feel like, cool, I'm not, I, I, this lady is desperate. This guy is desperate, right? So you need to build what people love. You need to get to the point where people are using your products. And once an investor is coming on board, it's easy for you to prove that you have a product that works, right? Then uh, why I have to share all this? The last thing I want to say is just like a comment. There are several reasons why a, a startup fell, right? And number one reason is just because that we founders, we lose, like we, 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 we lose faith on what we are building. We lose, like, like you give up. Let me use the word give up. We give up, right? So, it's not because of competition, because for you to even start talking about competition, you must have built what at least few people love. Then you now go to the big market, then begin to compete with people. So the biggest reason or the main reason why most of us fail is just because we give up. And the reason why we have to we give up is because startup is hard. Mr. Kola explained that it is hard. It is not that it is complex. It is hard from the context that you need to work hard. But startup is very simple. You don't need to go to Harvard. You just need to understand the simple basics, the basics, the simple aspect of it. That's all you need to understand. Once you have that basics, you can now begin to, begin to execute with understanding, right? So these are some of the things I want, to, I want us to really understand. Before we now start talking about the big things as in terms of uh, growth in terms of big companies, big uh, growing to big companies, $1 billion company. Well, if we are able to understand these basics, we can now be able to build the company that can now be able to grow and compete favorably. You know, when you now get your product market fit, that is now when competition starts. Competition does not start from the early stage. It is when you get to the product market fit. Google doesn't know you. That your idea you are thinking that Google knows. They don't know you. Facebook doesn't know you, right? So you trying to say you are competing with them is an error because they don't even know you until you build what people love. You have, the, the reason why you need to build your, a, a, build your startup around friends and people you trust is because at that early stage, these people are people who are going to resign from their jobs. These are people who are going to give up on amazing offers. So I can give you an instance with my co-founder who happens to be my CTO. It doesn't mean he cannot go and take job from different other companies and being paid well, but he is joining because, why? Because uh, there, there is something ahead in the future and also he believes, he believes in the vision and he is part of the vision. This is also possible that he will not want to one day and say, oh, I'm, I'm quitting. Why? Because he, we know each other. We have been there. We have worked together. We have been friends for a while, right? So unlike you just pick someone from somewhere, he might just tell you that his uncle has called him to come over to San Francisco. You know, he, you don't have an option. He will, jo he will join his uncle and you move over. 
and you know when your when your core person leaves, it is not easy for you to continue. And that is why most startups fail. So I'm not saying you shouldn't get someone from anywhere, but you need to date before you get before you marry, right? So your co-founders happen to be your 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 wives and your husband. So it's kind of a marriage. Okay, so these are a few things I, I want to share with us, and I believe we have questions. I, I, I think it's more better we ask questions, we, we do this more of conversations, because even as I'm speaking, I am learning, all of us are learning from each other. So I'm not speaking from the context that I'm not learning, I'm speaking from the context that I've been learning. I, I, I was part of uh, a global acceleration program uh, entrepreneurship World Cup last year, and it was amazing seeing what other people are building. And the easiest way for founders to be able to succeed happens to be when they come together as founders and then share ideas and leverage on each other's competence to be able to build what they want to build. And if you watch what these accelerators are doing, Y Combinator and other of them, what they are simply doing is to bring founders together. And that is why they say, they are bringing a community of founders together so that they can have leverage on each other to be able to succeed. Lastly, there is no guarantee for success, right? There's no guarantee for success. The only guarantee you have is for you to continue to work hard. You, your first idea might not succeed. So that is why I always say, don't talk about ideas, talk about the problem, right? So talk about the problem. Your idea will keep your idea will keep, the idea you have will keep like, it will keep changing, right? It will keep changing. The, the, the way you have it will keep changing. And the easiest way for you to explain what you are doing is not from the idea perspective, but from the problem. So what core problem do you want to solve? And when you are working on your startup, there are three things you need to understand. Number one is that your problem is, is going to remain the same. It's always going to be the same, right? Your customers are likely to be the same unless you are going to, unless you are looking at pivoting. But your solution, your solution to that problem can keep changing. Your solution to the problem can keep changing. But your prob your, the problem you are solving, the customers are likely to always remain the same, right? So you don't jump from building for health people and then uh, you, you start building for people that are another set of people, right? So you keep iterating until you get the right solution and then, and then you cannot be able to have a lot of people who are maximizing your product. So thank you every, everyone for listening. And I, I think we can, do, uh, we can do the conversation at this point. Thank you, everyone. It's a pleasure being here. My name is Igwe Ogro. And uh, it's a pleasure being here. And I run a company called uh, Choya. And it will also be a privilege to have you uh, check out what we are building and uh, also join us on our journey. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, everyone. All right. Thank you, Mr. Igwe and Mr. Kola. Uh, I'm so excited. Please, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you can use the chat session to uh, keep clapping for them. Uh, there's a club session there, so that let's show them the love and um, send your emoji on the chat and uh, appreciate them for, for a wonderful section that they have given to us. All right, uh, I already see some hands lifted. Uh, before we open up to questions, I would just want to summarize these. Uh, okay, hands, keep raising your hands if you have questions. We would uh, begin to ask you guys to unmute to. to to ask your questions. So Mr. Kola, Mr. Kola said something very important. One, third founder uh, he is, does not mean that you have failed. So you can now imagine his experience after failing, how many uh, startups that are benefiting from his failure, All right? So we need to understand that entrepreneurship is not a smooth journey. Uh, there's a chance to fail, but uh, Mr. Igor would say that failure is not failure. Failure is just a matter of you uh, standing up and um, dusting yourself and moving forward. Even the Bible, Bible uh, for Christians here would say that when the righteous fall, they shall rise up again. So it's a matter of you falling, falling and getting up and uh, correcting why you fell. Um, uh, something so strategic is 
please, most of us run SMEs, small, medium enterprises, and want to equate it to startup. The major, the major difference between, I'm just trying to reemphasize what the speakers have already said so they can answer questions. The major difference between a startup and, and, and SME is growth. So if you are doing a restaurant, what differentiates you from other restaurants? How can you be able to get to millions of users every, every, uh, every month and so on and so forth? So that is to say that you can actually be running your business, but try to understand that when you're talking about startup, you're talking about growth. You're talking about much money. You know, startups quote in billions, not in, not in millions, they quote in billions. And um, that is one thing that we, this is most of the reasons why startups fell happens to be one of the reasons we started Startup Club for our Five Tech Club. We understand the stress in raising funds. We understand the stress in uh, uh, funders' uh, conflict most of the times. We understand the challenges that can happen uh, in building a startup, lack of experience, and so on and so forth. That is why we started at Five Startup Club. The essence is to have young on innovators and entrepreneurs to join, join the cohort. Uh, even if you don't have a team, we will be able to pair you up with a team. Uh, so this, these are things that we are trying to do. Unlike an incubator that will ask you to form your team and come and join, we would help you on the journey, provided that your in innovation, provided that your your goal aligned with our goal would help you on the journey. So that was why we opened the call for Rad5 Startup Club, which most of us on this call happen to be all applicants. And um, we would continue to provide you with the support needed if you are accepted. Sometime next week, we'll be uh, sending out email to the successful applicants and we'll continue on this journey. So uh, at this juncture, I want to open up the floor for questions and let everyone ask questions and uh, I, I have Mr. Kola and Mr. Igwe still on this call to respond to them. Okay, let me just answer this question. Sorry, confident, uh, the application is already closed. The application is already closed. Uh, we'll keep you informed about continuous opportunities to join the startup club. Meanwhile, you can go to our website and register as a Rat5 Tech Club member to get up to date about what we, we are doing. But for the startup club, application is currently closed. All right, Mr. Timothy, over to you. Unmute yourself and ask your question. Just if you have a question, raise up your hand. Um, just there's a way to raise your hand. Raise hand on your app, or you can send the question on the chat. Mr. Timothy, over to you. Unmute and ask your question. Uh, all right, can you hear me? Loud and clear. All right, okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Mr. Kolakbo, uh, thank you for that. Um, accelerating presentation. It was very insightful. Um, Mr. I will go. That was very fine. You know, when you're speaking from the point of experience, um, it's a very different message. Uh, it's, it, it, it penetrates. So I can understand that. Um, I run a, I'm, I'm, I'm a startup uh, founder of uh, an audiobook company. We basically produce and sell audio. So, all right, Timothy, are you still there? Since we lost you. All right, while Mr. Timothy gets back, you can uh, hear. Are you hearing me? Yes, please start afresh. Your network drops. Oh, 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 okay, okay. So I, I said I'm an audiobook. Uh, I have a company, Valid Audiobook. We basically produce and sell audiobooks. So I'm coming from the background of an audio engineer for the past 10 years. So I've been an expert in that area, producing music. So what I decided to niche down to production of um, audio, audiobook, because of, uh, I basically love um, listening to audiobooks. Most of my consumption of books is through audiobooks. So it helps me to be flexible and to be able to attend to other things. Why? In fact, I read on the go. So illiteracy is a big, literacy is a big problem in Africa. And I feel being called to help address that problem in Africa. Now, to this point, we have been able to, I have a team 
have it, I have a co-founder, I have a team of developers, about two of them. They are working on our website, I mean, on our platform. Um, it's been, it's been, as uh, I, I would say, it's not been easy, you know. Um, when you don't have funding and you're trying to bootstrap, I started connecting with lots of players in my industry because I know if you want to do well, you have to connect with the ecosystem. So I started connecting with lots of players in the industry. Right now, audiobook industry in Africa is a very virgin one. I mean, it's very tender. So the biggest player is in Ghana. The biggest player of audiobook companies in Ghana are called books. Now, I started connecting. I, I connected with her. I've been following her for the past three years. So I connected with her yesterday and we started talking. She, they already have book. They, they have a running platform. They have um, grants gotten. They have funding. So she's coming from a very technical background. I mean, she's a, a lecturer at University of Ghana of Computer Science. So she has a technical and understanding. Of, can, you, can you go directly to the question so that other people okay. can So my answer. question is, I spoke with her and I discovered something, a problem. The problem I discovered is that in her industry, in her company, they outsource production. I mean, they had outsource production of audiobooks. So it takes a lot of money, it takes lots of money. Now, production is my expert. I mean, that's my core competence because that's where I'm coming from. And um, she's even wanting me to come and do some things for her, help her in some areas. I'm thinking of partnering with her to, first of all, my first question is, she said that if she's to do this again, that she, she wouldn't even want to venture into selling audiobooks online because it's a big problem because of the cost of maintenance of the platform. If someone at that age stage is saying that, I don't know whether it would be to scare me to come into that area or to give me a full knowledge. I feel she was sincere. Now, I was thinking of pivoting into a full-time production house, providing production services for audiobook, I mean, converting people's books, then partnering with her as a, a partner to produce, to provide production services for her company. I don't know which one to do, but then I've seen the problem and I'm trying to respond to it. So this is where I am right now. We are still talking and then I don't know if that is making a mistake or, or, or or chickening out, or kind of. So that's that's. I don't know if if you got my question. All right. Um. Uh, funny, not funny enough. Good enough. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Colon de Co, who has. Uh, I I know you must have known Mr. Colon has been into one of these uh, sectors too on audio books. Um. So I would want to just say each of them to respond within within three minutes at max. Two minutes, right? Please, two minutes at max to respond to it shortly. So to summarize this question, how do you see partnership with a potential uh, uh, competitor in the industry when it comes to startup? I think that's the summary of his question. Uh, how do you see partnership with a potential competitor uh, when it comes to running a startup? Uh, audiobook specifically is the industry. Please respond and let's proceed. Mr. Kola, you want to go first? No, go ahead, please. I'll go after him. Okay. Uh, I, I, I believe Mr. Kola will, will give you more insight on this, but this is, this, is, this is what I think. If you are looking at building a startup, partnerships are not the first thing you need to start doing. Partnerships... I'm not saying, remember when I keep explaining to say, you don't need to do this, it's not as if it is wrong, but there are reasons. You are just starting and partnerships, like massive partnerships. Now this partnership, what does it imply? What it implies is that for instance, let's say they give you 1 million content for you to host for you to put it on your platform, you might not be able to do it. You have not really gotten a structure of what you want to build, of what you want to do. I will also give you an instance from the point where we got some partnerships. For us, 
as a startup when we are when we are uh, when we are moving when we are, when we are starting and at the end of the day we didn't have the fund to 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 fund it the partnership we went, we now left what we're doing and started focusing on partnerships started asking people for fund and we left the core problem we want to solve right so you need to pay attention you know when i say when i say this i'm not saying it that partnership is wrong Flutterwave is doing a lot of partnerships because they have a solid product that is already working. So if you get into partnership, what form of partnership? Do you have a solid platform that is running, right? Is it the one that you, you come and your system, your, your server crash? You, can, you might not be able to absorb that pressure. So that's, that's the first thing I would want to say. You need to look at the partnership clearly and know what it entails. I know if you are ready to take up the partnership, then for you to think about partner, partnering with someone and you need to also align it with what you are trying to build, right? Opportunities will come. You need to learn how to say no. Interesting things will come. Interesting offers will come. We have tried to do certain things because it, it, it looks good. It looks... This brings me to saying you need to have a purpose. What is a purpose? What are you building? Every great company you see are built upon purpose. Your purpose is going to keep you not to derail. Even when Google is telling you, do this, I hope you know some persons, Google will ask them, we want to buy you. They will say no, because it doesn't align with their purpose. So what is your mission? What is your purpose? Is it in alignment with the partnerships, with the partnership you are looking for? This is what I want you to look at, okay? So if it is, right, and you can be able to carry it, that's cool. Thank you, Mr. Igwe. Uh, Mr. Kola, any comment? All right, yeah, thank you. Uh, well, I think that's a very great uh, response, uh, uh, Igwe. I think you've done justice to that question. Uh, most, although we don't have like the full information in terms of the stage or the status of your company in terms of like, do you have a team? Have you built an MVP? What have you done? I mean, there are a lot of you know, background information that is required to actually uh, be sure of uh, the best way you can approach it. But I think it has really done, has really given a, a very awesome response in terms of, I mean, why do you need the partnership? The, like you said, you said it's a virgin market, right? That is, is doing stuff in Ghana and you're in Nigeria and why can't you, you know, do yours in Nigeria? Uh, I mean, partnership can be in form of, um, maybe content uh, uh, display, maybe the content she has on the platform, maybe you can also be selling your, your platform. Apparently she doesn't have like tech background because she said the cost of maintaining the platform. So do you have that technical background? So these are some of the questions. Like I said, uh, we don't have the full picture, but based on the information we have, I think uh, the client terms of what you're building, all right? And there is also another interesting story by, I think PayPal, I probably heard of the PayPal mafia, uh, Elon Musk, uh, uh, what are these other founders, name? I can't remember their name. They're actually building different FinTech payment companies, all right, in Silicon Valley. And at the point they met over a dinner and they came together and they built PayPal, all right? so. There was a synergy at that point uh, coming together to build something bigger. So if you can, if you can find that, if there is synergy in terms of your purpose, your goal, and if it's all going to make sense, why not go for it? But the question is, what do you have now? What value are you bringing? In? You said you have like a technical audio engineering background. Is that the only uh, skill set you're taking to join our team, or do you have other people on your team? Do you have content you've already acquired on the platform? Uh, do you have users already? Are you, do you have customers that are using your product? Are you, so you just have to be clear on, on the value play or the value you're bringing on board. Once the synergy makes a lot of sense, of course, you can explore it, but you just have to be sure that uh, it's something, you know, that you're really going to be excited right. about. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Yeah. Kola. Um, so uh, I would just want to say, the uh, first identify your mission or your purpose or goal. That is the priority. Else you might end up receiving an offer that will take you to Ghana. 
and that's that's the next uh, that's what i can just say uh, um automatically swallowing up and you joining her team so be careful uh, just define your goal define what you want to achieve in your in your business you define the problem most importantly and uh, work towards it that will not define the partnership you can accept and the partnerships you cannot accept please do we have any other questions any other questions our time is already up okay i will count i will count to five and um i'll count to five and if there's no other question if there's no other hand raised we'll call it okay we have two persons raising their hands all right, uh, confidence over to you on mute and ask. Please go directly to your question. After that, Chukuka, Ibezim, go ahead. Okay, can you hear me? Loud and clear, proceed. Okay, uh, my question is uh, you know, uh, I've observed that uh, most of the scarcity of uh, agri tech startups in Nigeria and uh, is because I, I can say that basically because of the traditional way in which uh, agriculture is being practiced. So I don't know, I want to hear from the two speakers uh, how or from what angle uh, the uh, uh, agricultural value chain in Nigeria can actually integrate tech to form a startup in that industry. All right. Um... All right. Let me just. Yeah, let me just quickly go at this uh, because of time. Yeah, I think, um, uh, thanks for that question. Uh, interesting. Oh. Hello? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, yeah. okay, all right. Yeah, I think it's broad. Uh, it's an interesting question, uh, and I, it's broad because, I mean, I think you just have to first of all look at the value chain, all right? Uh, I think because looking at agriculture or agri tech, uh, you first of all have to look at the value chain end to end, uh, and there are a lot of problems in the value chain from planting to harvesting to transportation uh, to storage to selling. So, I mean, Nigeria, we still import a lot of tomatoes, for example. I mean, and you see tomatoes still wasted in our farms, there's still a lot of wastage, you know. So I just think you just have to do a lot of research uh, in that specific value chain you want to play because the opportunity is massive. It takes a lot of time. Uh, take your time to read, to understand, and very deep research in the facts that you want to play. I think uh, that will give you better clarity uh, in the best way uh, to pursue. Thank you. Okay, can I ask my question now? Uh, this is question, Igwe, Igwe, do you have anything to say to that? No, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead with the question. Okay, good day, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Kolade and Igwe, and the moderator, Mr. John. Uh, like I said, I'm Chukuka. I based in Medugui. I'm an Igbo boy. So, here in Medugri, I the question I wanted to ask because I I am doing my master's here and also I do business. I usually come to Lagos, buy goods, you know, before I used to transport using uh Young Shagro or any of the public transport, send the goods down to Medugri. So but as time evolved, sometimes I had to fly them if they are not liquid. So then if you if you've been in the news of recent, you'll find out that here in Medugri, the the governor of recent disbanded some uh, what is it called taxi? He bought all this Corolla LE, you know, for the indigenous. He just shared it for taxi, and then coupled with the Amitu healthcare, you know, healthcare gadgets, hospital equipment. So I used to go get those things from, I used to get it from uh, Lagos and bring it down here. So actually my question is like, I've been, I've been trying to crack my head, like how do I, you know, technologically and based on how everything is going, because I know some other Igbo boys that are here, probably older than me, I'm very young, 
you know, that have been doing this and the age is catching up with them. Because I know they can you, you can't keep up the physical market, you know, the normal buying and selling. So I've been thinking, I've been just looking for a way to, you know, a kind of looking for how to, you know, infuse what I've been doing, you know, whether if I can create the, an, an app where I can share for these people. I have clients, I have NGOs, you know, government hospitals where I supply, where they can make, make requests. You know, I just want to create a market technologically. You know, so that have been my that have been my drive. That's what I've been. That's why I actually applied for this uh, to this forum. Thank you. That's my question. Hello. Hi. Yes, your question was fixed. Uh, any of the speakers willing to take on that question before my comment? All right, yeah, so uh, what I would just like to say is uh, you, don't, you, don't, you don't build a product, uh, that is, you don't build a problem looking for a solution, right? The question is, what, what problem are you trying to solve here? All right, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't like I said, technology is, uh, you use technology as an enabler, all right? Technology enables things, all right? The question is, what are those people there don't, don't even know how to use your smartphones and you're saying smartphone is the way to go. No, so you don't build products like that. You have to, it can be a phone call. It can, it can be something as simple as building an effective phone system where people can call and their orders will be effectively placed. All right, so the question I want to ask again is, uh, maybe you don't necessarily have to answer now is, what is the problem? What pain are you trying to solve in that market? Is it transportation? Is it supply cost? Then talk with these people. What other way? These people that you think they are getting older, what other way do they want this problem solved? They build something in that part. So just don't think that, okay, I want to build a mobile app. What are these mobile? Is a mobile app? Day? What are these phone calls that they want? Right? So that's why I mentioned like the Lean Startup methodology approach towards the end of. Uh, presentation uh, like you you have to uh, have conversations with your customers before you start building right it's very very important for you to have conversations for you to listen before you build not that you build then you now take it to your customer uh, I remember the last conversation I had on my podcast somebody was talking about market product fits the other way around like what was the pain that the market is screaming for then you now build for that pain. Not like you build a product, you know, then you're now taking it to the market and you're now struggling. So I think you just have conversation with these people, listen to them, and build the solution that they want, not necessarily what you think. Uh, thank you. I hope that helps. All right. Thank you. Um, Mr. Gwe, do you have anything to say? I, I can summarize that. Not at all. Just just make sure you have a problem you are solving, just like Mr. Kola said. So if, for every entrepreneur here, for every founder here, it starts with a problem. Just clearly know what problem have you identified? What problem do you want to solve? Don't think about the solution. What is the problem? And make sure that that problem is a problem that you have the capacity and capability to be able to solve. And the solution must not be a perfect solution, right? Once you, once you build the solution, you can now keep improving on it to make sure true feedbacks, building MVP, and make sure that it's what your customers want, just like Mr. Kola said. So make sure you are building based on, based on problem, not based on a solution. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, so just to add to that, to differentiate, remember, what we are talking about is startup and not SME. So um, uh, you mentioned about working in Medigree. So are your market also out of Medigree? That is the next question you ask. Are other NGOs, are all other um, businesses that you service all across the nation, are they across the world? Do they have the same problem that you want to solve? So that will help you to uh, make decision. Unless you're not just looking at how to 
automate your simple business. That's that your small business. Just want to automate it, and uh, that is uh, uh, that is not what we are discussing here. That you can always reach out to to us, and we have a, a further discussions on that. Um, do we have any other questions? We have to draw the curtain close here. Um, any other question? One, two, three, four, and five. No other question. Are we, are we getting the recording, please? Pardon, confidence, I didn't get that. Are we getting the recording? All right. Um, sure, we would. Uh, we had a little uh, challenge with the internet that made the first section to break. I uh, would uh, see if we have any backup, but from Igwe section, it's recorded. So if we have all arranged, we would upload it to our YouTube channel and you would have access to them. We'll all email it to the participants. All right, uh, I want to do okay, the question. Because I would like to personally have uh, All right. Oh, it's talking. Ijam, are you talking? Okay. But I have to meet every other person. All right. So, um, so lastly, before we end this uh, section, we want to appreciate every one of you for joining this call. Uh, all we want to say is thank you for joining. I believe that you've added a, we've added value to your experience so that when you want to venture into startup, building a startup, you would really understand what you are in for. And for those of them that would be opportune to join our club of uh, the startup club, that should commence fully in March, you have already gotten a tip of what is expected from you to build a startup. We, we are here to support more entrepreneurs, tell your friends, and um, engage with us on, across our social media. Every of our social media has our 5 Tech Hub as a username. Just type at 5 Tech Hub, you will see us. For the person joining us, asking for channel, go to YouTube, search for at 5 Tech Hub. It, uh, you will certainly see us. The name seems to be so unique. Uh, that is a fun fact. So uh, we want to cut and close. Uh, yes, mama, yeah, hey, do you have anything to say? I've muted you. I muted yeah, you. You are muted. So, okay. Quickly, please. Quickly. You just have a minute. It's okay. I'm just happy to be part of the program, and I hope that I will be able to learn something in some fashion that will make me more technological savvy so as to improve my career and uh, decide their life. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Uh, we, we hope, please, you can mute yourself now. We hope you're... Okay, we hope your application is... Please mute yourself. Okay, thank you. At this juncture, thank you all for coming. Keep engaging with us on our social media platform. If you wish to be getting our newsletter uh, on available opportunities for, um, for startups and uh, programs that we are offering, uh, go through our website on rat5.com.ng, complete the form for our five membership, and we'll keep sending you our newsletter, which comes twice, once in every two weeks, so that you would uh, get to know more about our opportunities coming. So thank you, Mr. Kola, for your time. Thank you, Mr. Igwe, for your time. Thank you, everyone. Do have... Do you have a... a okay, before we drop the call, sorry, before we drop the call, uh, Choya is one of our ventures, and uh, uh, they plan to do a launch later this week. Please, in two minutes, if Mr. Igwe just share an insight about Choya. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity. I want to say we are not doing a big launch, right? We are not doing a big launch. It's kind of, we are rolling out our better version of our product. And uh, what my ask for everyone here is to join us on this journey. Uh, you, I want everyone to go to choyagroup.com and join our wait list. If you, are, if, you are, if you have a business, you can join as a business. If you're a customer, 
if you're a consumer customer you can also join as a customer if you don't have a business okay so very simple what is the problem we are trying to solve we are building a solution that has to do with both the customer and for businesses so for businesses you see that running advertisement on on, on tv on radio on billboards are quite expensive if you happen to have a business especially as a startup or small business local businesses and also even when you want to move to facebook to run these ads you see that most people are likely not to engage on your ad because they barely know who you are right so what we are doing is to now provide an alternative advertisement for small businesses local businesses and startups which happens to be word of mouth. So we are digitizing word of mouth advertisement for small businesses. So through our platform, small businesses, startups, and brands can be able to generate reviews and referrals and get it distributed through word of mouth digitally through our platform, helping them to be able to save costs and also gain their visibility. So that is what we are building for businesses. But on the other side for users, what we want to do, our mission is to see that everyone across the globe, everyone across, across the, around the world, we can help them save an extra dollar on every of their purchase. So how can we help customers to be able to save an extra dollar on every of their purchase? So that is what we are doing for customers. And we want you to join us on this mission thank you so much thank you for the opportunity right, thank you very much uh it's time for picture picture section please we would ask every one of us here to turn on their videos and put on your best smiling faces that we would take a a selfie put on your videos please i ask politely turn on your videos if you can uh we wait for one more minute Please turn on your video if you can, and let's take a, a, a selfie. Let's see beautiful faces and handsome faces too. We understand, it's a remote, it's a remote you know, we, we understand the game, right? Um, I'm taking first shot. Search is, uh, all right, I'm taking the next shots now. Some persons haven't turned their videos yet. Um, Okay, let me go to page two. Okay. Okay, one more and the last one. So before we end the call, I want you to know that if you're into academia, if you know a school that knows a school or a school that, uh, that uh, needs an automated system to use their solution, we have one of the startups in the hub to School Suite Nigeria that can provide you with that solution. Either you chat us up or you just search Kusit Nigeria on Google and you will get to find them. Thank you very much. I'm so happy to see all of us. Do have a lovely day and always stay safe. COVID is real. Bye-bye. <laughs> thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Enjoy yeah, the rest bye. of All right. Expect our emails for this video for those that we can crop out. Thank you, Mr. Kola. Thank